Hi everyone, welcome to the new episode on Deep Thinker. Hey daddy, do you know what are the prerequisites to build an intelligent agent like AGI? Daddy, how can we approach the challenge of creating an AGI? These are great questions kids. Why don't we start by defining what an AGI is, and then we will dive deep into the mystery of intelligent agents. Artificial general intelligence is the hypothetical ability of an intelligent agent to understand or learn any intellectual task that a human being can. Now, how do we build such an intelligent agent? We need to meet the following three conditions to build an AGI. First, AGI is a type of universal Turing machine, which means it can be built upon any substrate that is capable of computation and memory. Second, we need to have sufficient compute and memory to be able to support the simulation of intelligence. Finally, we need to find the right approach and algorithms to instantiate an AGI. Computer pioneer Alan Turing famously proved that if a computer can perform a certain bare minimum set of operations, then, given enough time and memory, it can be programmed to do anything that any other computer can do. Machines exceeding this critical threshold are called Turing Universal Computers, which includes all of today's computers. Given enough time and resources, a machine-based intelligence can accomplish any goal as well as any other intelligent entity. For example, if the intelligence wants better social skills, forecasting skills, AI design skills, or skills to build a robot factory, it can acquire them. In other words, Universal Intelligence has the potential to develop into Life 3.0. Now, does intelligence require a specific substrate? Does it require carbon like most life forms on Earth? Since memory stores the state and information about the world, any matter with long-term stable states can be used for memory. Computation is the transformation of information from one memory state to another, so any substrate that can enable this transformation can compute. Since intelligence is the ability to accomplish complex goals through computation and memory, intelligence is substrate independent. The choice of matter, however, can have a significant effect on the speed and size of an intelligent mind. A carbon-based mind, for example, is constrained in speed, latency, size, and durability. This enables silicon mind to scale to sizes 18 orders of magnitude larger, implement new algorithms on the fly, while having other advantages such as being more reliable, editable, and duplicable. In fact, Silicone-based intelligence operate on a much faster time scale and will find it excruciating slow to communicate with carbon-based lifeforms. Now, how much compute and memory do we need to create a superintelligence? We need up to a million flops and 10,000 bits to simulate a single neuron. Simulating an insect takes a trillion flops, while simulating a single human takes a billion billion flops. Finally, to simulate all humans on Earth, we would need up to 10 to the power of 28 flops of computation. The total computation capacity globally today is 10 to the power of 22 flops which is enough to simulate 10,000 people. If Moore's law holds, then we are still a good two centuries away from reaching the theoretical limit of computer, which is a 5 times 10 to the power of 50 flops per kilogram for computation and 10 to the power of 31 bits per kilogram for memory. Beyond this fundamental limit, we will risk of creating matter so dense that it becomes a black hole. Thank you daddy for explaining the requirements to build an intelligent agent. But, what technology can we use to create an AGI? The truth is that we are not there yet and we may discover more unknown unknowns on the way. However, there are four potentially promising approaches we can take to build an AGI. They are neural networks, whole brain simulation, genetic algorithms, or biological enhancements. One general approach to achieve AGI is with neural networks which we have seen a tremendous progress over the past decade. The first possible path is to use self-supervised reinforcement learning, ideally with automatic goal generation. This means that, instead of specifying a specific objective function, the agent will generate a goal or curriculum to learn as it discovers the complexities of its environment. We have already seen some rudimentary success of self-supervised agents like Alpha Zero and Mu Zero. If we can reach to a point where the agent can self-direct its learning goals and gain expertise over an unlimited range of applications, we would arrive at a general intelligent agent. Another path here is to build upon the foundation of attention-based generative models, as seen with transformer models like GPT-3. The demonstration here is that, 
by training on the data of the entire Internet which contains a major portion of human knowledge, an agent can gain sufficient context to be able to be successful in many applications. However, we do have an embodiment challenge. While the agent may be able to reach almost human intelligence from training in a simulated environment, it won't be able to exceed human-level intelligence due to the contraint of the data available. To achieve superintelligence, it must have a body to interact with the real environment to learn knowledge not available in datasets, even though the rate of learning in real environment can be much slower than simulated environments. There are some techniques to enable the system to perform most of the learning in simulated environments before coming to the real world, such as increase the transfer capability of deep learning systems through simulated environmental perturbations that can make the system much more adaptive to any environment, including the real world. The third hypothetical path is to use hierarchical neural networks, with symbolic structure managing a deep learning structure. This is similar to how our brain works with a conscious layer interacting with an unconscious layer. Fourth possible path is to implement an iterative AI. The idea here is that we will assign a narrow AI to write code to build an intelligent agent through many iterations. While neural networks in general is probably our most promising approach, we still have lots of unknown unknowns to overcome. The second major approach is whole brain emulation. This involves first scanning the brain include post-mortem vitrification, slicing, and scanning. Then based on the raw data, create a 3D reconstruction of the brain and translate the representation to a machine model. Finally, we will simulate the model with large compute to extend it beyond human intelligence. This can be challenging due to the technological requirements involved to scan brain at such high resolution. It also could capture lots of unnecessary messy detail that arrived from evolution which do not necessarily contribute to intelligence, and may impede us from iterating this model to achieve AGI. Using genetic algorithm could be another way to achieve AGI. We could simulate biological evolution with environmental fitness function to select the populations that perform best in such an environment. However, given that it took 3.7 billion years of natural selection in the real world to achieve human intelligence, this could require huge computing resources and time to get to level beyond human intelligence. The fourth method to achieve AGI is through biological cognition. One path is to use mate selection. By encouraging the most intelligent people to produce more children, we could enhance cognition over course of many generations. The second path is to optimize for genes that lead to higher intelligence through direct gene editing or embryo selection. This method can allow a faster path to higher intelligence, but can have risks if we do not fully comprehend the interdependencies between gene expression. The third way is to use performance-enhancing drugs to improve memory and compute of the brain. However, the improvement may be limited as drugs does not significantly alter the architecture of the brain. The last path is to use brain-to-computer interface to help biological brain to access external compute and storage that can vastly improve its memory, bandwidth and latency. This can enable humans to gradually transition into a silicon-based intelligence before the AGI takeoff scenario. Because all of these biological enhancement methods rely on carbon-based life, they could be the slowest to achieve AGI among the four approaches we discussed today. Today we had gone over the prerequisites to build an AGI, including concepts such as universal Turing machine, substrate independence, compute and memory requirements. We had also investigated methods to build an AGI, including future advancements in neural networks, whole brain emulation, genetic algorithms, and biological cognition enhancements that could give birth to an intelligence beyond our control and imagination. Thank you for watching the video today. Please like this video and click the bell button to be notified of future deep thinker content. See you next time.